Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to this class. Today we have a couple of things to do uh, after this vacation period from Father's Day to Teacher's Day. And we came back yesterday, but I did not have classes with you. But today is the day. Good afternoon, everyone in the chat. So we're missing the ones who sometimes come to the school. Today, there's nobody in the classroom. That's a shame. Okay. Now, uh, let me share with you uh, today's topic. And I will explain what we're exactly doing today. You're gonna be using your spotlight on literature. Spotlight on literature E, page 68. 68-68. For this topic, we're going to be studying gerunds and infinitives. So we know that they are very simple to know. Gerunds are the ing form of the verbs. And you all know that infinitive is the use of the base form and preposition too. So that's a basic English. And I know that all of you know about this. We're gonna review a little bit. And I want to share with you um, a YouTuber that I came across with, um, and he can explain this topic better than the way I can. So I'm gonna share the video with you. So he will explain. Good afternoon, Gabriel. Okay, um, so there it is. This is the best YouTuber I could came across with and the only one that I can afford. Okay, let me know if you can, if you can listen. Yeah, for sure you can listen. So first we're gonna listen to something related to sincerity. And then we will see the video and I will pause it so I can explain a little, a little bit more. Hi, welcome again to English Lessons with JC. Uh, I hope that you're doing just fine in your homes. Today I want to talk about uh, sincerity. Remember that sincerity is one of the main principles uh, our institution stands for. And the quote says like this. Sincerity is not to say everything you think, but to mean everything you say. Okay, um, it is vital uh, because it helps trust people that are perceived as being sincere in their manners, words, and acts generally have a better time getting others to believe them. It's not uh, that easy to be sincere all the time, but there are certain ways or little steps that you can follow in order to practice this core value in daily basis. So for example, uh, you remember that you gotta be real, uh, do good without expecting any kind of reward. Uh, don't polish your responses. Use direct communication because remember that communication or effective communication breaks when it goes from one person to another. And what's important to remember that sincerity is an act from your heart. Whatever you say, you must mean it. Today's class is about gerunds and infinitives. In your spotlights on literature, you have to open pages 68 and 70. Well, actually from 68 to 70. First thing first, uh, we're going to remember what gerunds and infinitives are. And so I will provide you the definition of a gerund. A gerund is a word formed from a verb and the suffix ing. So you have two elements here, the verb and the suffix ing. So you have, for instance, the verb cook. You add ing and you have cooking. Watch, watching. Read, reading. Very simple. Then you have the infinitives. 
An infinitive is uh, the base form of a verb, but in this case, it's going to be preceded by preposition to. Uh, we're going to use the verb jump. You said to jump, understand, to understand. You see, they are very simple. Okay, let me see if you have the, if you've got it clear. Uh, Steven Artiga. Are you able to talk, my friend? Can you unmute your microphone finally? No. You're not there. Okay. Um, William, could you fix your problem with your microphone? Okay, let me see the chat because you're chatting. Ah, Steven. Can you use your microphone? Ah, okay, I see. And what about you, William? Can you fix that problem with your mic or not? So let's play safe here with people who always participate. So we cannot delete the class. Uh, Naomi Mendoza. Hi, teacher. Hello, give me please three examples of gerunds, please. Anything. Anything. Three gerunds. Uh -huh, Mendoza. Um, don't mind. Uh, no, those are uh, infinitive. Gerons is the ing. Cooking. Ah, playing. Uh -huh. uh, eating. Eating. Running. And running. Thank you. Uh, Lucy. Hi. Hello, help me with the infinitives, please. Three infinitives. Contrary to gerunds, we don't use ing here. We use the base form preceded by preposition to. Infinitive. Yay. Um, to play. Uh-huh. And um, to eat. Yay. And to run. Exactly. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you. So now that you have it clear, you have it so clear, let's continue watching this excellent YouTuber. So now that we have uh, remember what gerunds and infinitives are, we also have to know that gerunds can be used in various ways. We're going to study four for this lesson. The first one is gerunds as subject. When the gerund takes the subject position, it is what or who we are referring or talking about in a sentence. Like in the examples here, you have reading, living, and learning. So as you can see, they have taken the subject position. They go to the beginning of the sentence. And we can say that Reading is my favorite spare time activity. Living in Europe is expensive, but it is amazing. Learning German is The uh, second one is gerunds as predicate noun. A predicate noun occurs after a linking verb. Uh, in this occasion, this time is verb B in the different conjugations. Is, are, were, have been, etc and uh, they refine the subject. And that will be easier to understand by taking a look to these uh, examples. Her occupation was writing poetry. My hobby is playing video games. My nephew's best sport is swimming. The first thing that you have to pay attention to is the linking verb here and here. And immediately after that, we have the gerunds. 
writing and is defining or redefining the subject. The subject is her occupation. What is her occupation? Writing poetry. My hobby is playing. Playing is my hobby. And my nephew's best sport so is swimming. Swimming is telling me something more about this subject. Number three. Uh, Do you have any questions about usage number one and number two? As a predicate noun and as a subject? Questions? No? no. Okay. Uh, germs as direct objects. Germs can be direct objects when they tell what or who is receiving the action. You have to remember the function of a subject and the function of an object in a sentence. And that will make your life easier. I enjoy. Enjoy is my action. Who is receiving the uh, effects of enjoy? Having. Having a big meal in my birthday. He doesn't allow smoking in his place. And the last one, I love drawing. I think that this one is very simple to understand because as I said before, you have to remember uh, the function of a direct object in a sentence. Aha, uh -huh. we have here the subject. Well, in all of them, we have the subject at the beginning, then we have the action and the thing or the who or the what that receives the effects of the action is the direct object. In this case, all of them are gerunds having, smoking, and drawing. That is, what or who receives the action. And the last one is uh, gerunds as objects of preposition or of the preposition. So you have to remember something about this. In English grammar, we have already standardized the combination of certain verbs with a specific prepositions. For example, you say charge with, agree with, uh, depend on, impose on, play for, pray for, excuse for, listen to, etc. And it says that in English grammar, the object of the preposition is a noun, noun phrase, or pronoun that follows a preposition and complete its meaning. And how do they do so? It is very simple. You have to remember uh, last year uh, when we study uh, prepositional phrases. And what do a prepositional phrase does is that they um, shows the relationship between the action and the object. So, and this is how uh, it completes the meaning. You have to remember this from last year. A prepositional phrase shows the relationship between the action and the object. So uh, now that I have said this, we can understand the examples. I'll call you before leaving the town. In this uh, statement, uh, before it's a preposition, but you might be thinking, teacher, teacher, uh, before is an adverb. It's an adverb of place. It tells me where, yeah, but in this case, and according to the context, we... Well, actually, it's um, of time, not of place. It tells you when, not where. That, that was my bad. We are using it as preposition. We can also use before as conjunction, but not this time. She believes in, we have preposition, in telling the truth. And the last one, he is in charge of collecting the papers. At this point, we are at the middle of the class. The second part is infinitives. Infinitives can be used in various ways. There are not too many in this lesson. We have only three. Number one, nouns and subjects. The second, infinitives as adverbs. And the last one is as adjectives. 
For understanding easier, uh, it is essential that you remember the functions of nouns or subjects. Remember that a subject is what or who we are talking about in a sentence. And in this case, the infinitives take the uh, subject position, like in the gerunds. Uh, to act like that is childish. To read is my passion. To learn a second language is essential for my career. To watch much TV is not good for you. As you can see, to act, to read, to learn, and to watch are what we are talking about in each example. The second one is uh, infinitives as adverbs. And remember what is an adverb. An adverb is a word that modifies verbs, adjectives, and other adverbs. And in this case, these uh, infinitives are going to tell us why or how the action is being done. So I raised my hand. And the question you have to ask yourself is why I raised my hand to speak. Raise it because I wanted to speak. Dolphins use echolocation to identify. They use to identify prey. Bats hang upside down to sleep. You see, to sleep is uh, an adverb here, or is making the function of an adverb because it is telling me something else about the action. And the last one, I studied hard. Why? To get a scholarship abroad. And the last one is infinitives as adjectives. You have to keep in mind that adjectives are words that modify nouns. So in this case, you got to remember that all of the infinitive forms will be telling you something else about the subject. So you have to ask yourself the question, who? So uh, he was the last boy in school to learn the alphabet, to learn who he was. Uh, this is the best place to stay the night. So you have to ask who, or in this case, what, to stay this place. Marco is a cool person to be around with. To be around with. Who? Marco. The movie to watch is Die Hard. To watch what? The movie Die Hard. So, and so uh, this is the end of the lesson. If you have. Uh... Okay, that was the best explanation, the best teacher the money can buy. And we will work on some exercises in your books. Okay, there we are. Page 70, no, 69, page 69. In exercise number one, you have to point out the gerund in each sentence. So, for example, in letter A, the gerund is here, is here in. But followed by that, you're going to identify the use of each gerund in the previous sentence. You have to tell me if this gerund right here is being used as a subject, as a predicate noun, direct object, or object of the preposition. So, you got to do that for all of these sentences here. And you will have three minutes. Well, not four minutes to do it. Please work it out.
So then I'm gonna give you the answer just because I see that you're busy in your homes. So hearing, here is the subject. Becoming is the object of the preposition. Feeling is the subject. Calling is a direct object. Ah, and sleeping is the predicate noun. Here we have two gerunds. This one here in letter E is predicate noun. This one in letter F is fooling, is the object of the preposition. Then in letter G, we have volunteering. Volunteering is the direct object. And letter H, losing many friends. Losing is the subject. And for causing here in letter I is object of the preposition. So in exercise number two, well, we already done it, number three. Uh, Jessica, can you hear me with the instructions of number three, please? Okay, uh, identify the use of each gerund in the previous sentences has subject, predict noun, direct object, or object of a preposition. And now with number three, please. Uh, write a sentence with each gerund phrase. Okay, thank you. So you're gonna use these prompts. Yeah, they're prompts using gerunds right here. You can use them as whatever you want, as a subject, as a predicate noun, or direct object. Because I think that using it as an object of a preposition, yeah, you can also use them as object of the preposition. So you have to create your own ideas with these prompts. Use them whatever you want. In five minutes, you can do that. Five minutes. Of the infinitives here. Wonder, talk, see, happen, wake, laugh, doubt, and notice. Okay, let me see if I got the answers here. I open my eyes to see the paladin standing near me. I was amazed because I had begun to doubt John's of Ark's prophecies. I was expecting that everything she said would start to happen as she said it would. After I started to talk to him, I turn it around to notice, to notice that Noel was with us. I began to laugh at my foolishness. Noel said, I was beginning to wonder when you would start to wake up. And then you have to work yourselves with exercises two, exercises three on page 71 in your books. Okay, so uh, I think this is it. And we will see you Monday.